Ah, there we are. Okay, good. We are now on Twitch. Ah, there we are. I think the stream is great and all, but um, okay, good. We are now on Twitch. Hunter just posted a collection of aluminum Christmas trees that I'm gonna go look at. <laughs> so, see ya. See ya. That's right. This is our this is our news uh, this is our new Twitch stream where we just look at aluminum Christmas trees. I'm just gonna read you headlines. And let me make sure that all the audio is good. I think we're good. Oh, you don't see that chair drifting in the frame. Good job. Cool. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I'm I'm trying a new thing. You can um, I, I'm gonna make you a little bit larger, Patrick. So right now, no, you're good, you're good, you're good. And then I'm gonna go like this. Now there's a wall between us, and I'm gonna scoot you over. Oh, so scary. Let's try to look larger for you. Uh, let mm -hmm. me retweet this. Oh yeah, yeah, it's good. Um, idea. Mm This is a very entertaining stream, us sending our Twitter notices out. So, uh, Cole. Yes. What video games have you been playing lately? So, just to break the ice here. Yeah, break the ice. What have I been playing? I, um, weeks. so the past, like, month, two months, no, really COVID, it's been StarCraft, but more recently, started playing Apex again, mm -hmm. which is great. It's just gotten better. I don't, I'm so impressed by Apex. Uh, Legends. I think it like PUBG has often been my favorite battle royale, but I think I'm coming around to Apex. It's been my main thing. What about you? What have you been playing? Um, so you turned me on to this reviewer who did a really funny review of Caves of Cud, um, which is probably not at all PC to talk about. Um, <laughs> but I watched his other reviews, and I had had Endless Space two in my collection for a long time, and um, Stellaris has been kind of boring me lately, mm. so I, I, I'm sorry, Stellaris. I, I mean, like, <laughs> He'll be good. back. Um, they always come back. Yeah, they just put out a species pack for Stellaris, and I was like, "Eh, I'm not here for this." <laughs> um, even though they tried new mechanics. Uh, so yeah, so I've, I've been trying to play Endless Space too. Uh, I've been playing this thing called Tabletop Simulator quite a bit. I have um, so many hours. I feel like I have every achievement. Uh, I actually don't. I got one during the root tournament I was officiating because I had never been in a room with eight people before. <laughs> uh, not officiating. I was commenting. Officiating. Um, <laughs> Dearly beloved. Excuse me. <laughs> uh, and then I've been playing Wrath uh, Eon of Rune, which is kind of a, um, a FPS throwback to like Quake. Um, Ooh, nice. With some new, with some new, some new little twists. I, it's it's well done. I'm. It's still in early access. I would say. Uh, if I had to fix anything about it, if I had a magic wand or if I was a developer, I would, uh, I'd had a few more monsters. It's a little, it gets a little samey because mm -hmm. there's just, there's only like eight or 10 monsters that they're in their palette. Yeah. Um, and there's only five weapons, which I think is actually an intentional design choice. I think none of the weapons you go, aha, I have the thing for every situation right now. And so I think if there was more weapons, it might wreck that. But mm -hmm. again, I might play around with one or two more because it gets like, at some point you're like yeah I'm, it's it's it just feels kind of samey because of that so i have this cool, yeah oh, go ahead no no no. go ahead what is cool about it what i'm really liking about it is it has a hub world which um you know quake did but quake's hub world was more just selecting the world and the difficulty whereas this hub world is you go into a portal and then you fight your way through a level and get the thing at the end it's just a key and then you come back to the hub world and you can do the seven worlds in any order you want mm -hmm. and i i was worried about that i thought well if you start with the last world you're going to end up with like in a really difficult spot and then if you go back if you play the really hard in level what will the rest be like and but it's neat they did this thing where if you play whatever order you play the levels in it intros the monsters to you correctly mm -hmm. and then it'll seed harder monster sets into the levels based on what order you play them in Oh, okay. Um, Interesting. Yeah, yeah. I, I, cause, so I, cause I, it, there's no cloud save on it, so I've been playing two different games. Mm -hmm. 
and and I noticed that right away because I was like, oh, I'm going to play the other levels, and then I was like, oh, neat. Oh, that's, well, yeah, that's interesting. I um the other thing that I have on my docket, my like post oath gift to myself was Outer huh. Wilds, which I really want to play. I'm like so pumped and primed. I have it installed. It's ready to go. But probably this weekend because I kind of want to. I want to like someone told me that it was a little like The Witness. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously nothing is really like The Witness, but I I know enough about it to want to play it in a big block of time. I don't want to like play it for half an hour. I started um, it on my well, first of all, I started on my laptop, which made it smell like smoke, so I stopped playing it. <laughs> <laughs> But then, um, yeah, I agree. I think you do need to play it in one, one segment. And so that's kind of what I was like. I, I, I felt that wall like in my head. And I was like, mm-hmm. I need to like, back up. And chill. So I but guess also, we should talk about games. Yeah, I suppose. All right. Well, we are talking about games. Yeah, we are. Uh, that's true. That's true. Not the kind <laughs> of games we work on, though. Uh, so uh, the studio right now is crazy busy. Um, I feel like, you know, we, we might be a little quiet on social media, but it's one of those. At least, I, I don't know. I feel very quiet on social media lately. But it's just Still waters I, run deep. Yeah, and there's just a lot. There's a lot happening. Um, we are looking at a year uh, that potentially will have more games come out in it than any year we've ever had. Um, maybe the rest of our catalog combined. Maybe there's like just a lot, <laughs> um, just like an absolute mountain of things that that we're looking at, and we're also. Um, uh, you know, one thing that they they say about big projects too is that they don't. Like projects don't really end; we just get like little breaks. And so, uh, I'm happy to like to take questions about previous stuff. I think that's, that's true for Patrick too. And I'll I'm, I'll give like a very micro oath update, which is we got the insert in, we approved the final box design. I had mentioned in the last stream that we were uh, we were optioning foil for the cover, and then we got the foil samples in, and it just like didn't work with the original design. It looks much better in white, which is how Kyle drew it. Uh, so we're, we're in a definitely stick with the white um but we are like in these these like last steps of uh of, of oath work um the other exciting oath thing happening is we are experimenting with some new um play aids that we're going to be offering to everybody uh when the game comes out so uh in working in coordination with people on the woodland warriors discord and other places we've been producing this like really cool online faq so that you can like look up any card and you can see like any errata points and like notes about card interactions. And we are starting to populate that right now. So if you've been playing a lot of Oath, you should get yourself to the Woodland Warriors Discord because there's a lot of Oath players there. And uh, feel free to like talk about the cards and help us flesh it out. So by the time the game is released, we're going to have like a pretty awesome card database uh, all built and set up and hopefully some other cool tools too. Um, but that's all like... Talk to us if hmm? you go to the Discord. That's true. That's true. All, basically, all the staff members are there. We have like cool purple tags that they just added or text or something. Um, yeah. Just the, said oh yeah, it's a, it is awesome, um, <laughs> and and it's just it's a very good community and a great place for pickup games or you know just any if you if you if you find yourself like with a little bit of time and wanting to play a game of root, my goodness, you're 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 a click away from hundreds of root players. Uh, and, and we also like one of the things I'll also mention. Uh, I'll also mention about that audience is like when we started building the FAQ, several people on those forums had like great questions, like, "Oh, how does this card operate with this card in this very special circumstance?" And uh, there are some times when the interact the, mo- most of the interactions are clear, but some of them require just like a little bit of work to understand exactly how they work, and so we can provide that guidance right now. Um, yeah, so it's, it's been helpful. There's been lots of good. Uh, Lots of good work on Oath. Oath is pretty much done, though. It's just at the factory, so there's no reason to prattle on about it too much. That's, you know, we'll, we'll talk I more mean, about the game as it goes on, goes to release. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> it's, it's all, it is awesome. I like... I, I can't, I'm blown away by how much content there is for it. it. So I would usually, it was funny, I like made that tweet about how much is in the box, because I've always said like, oh, by art, by art ask, it's like three or four times as large as Root. But the design ask is actually much, much larger because uh, Root only has like 20 unique card powers. Actually, it's less than 20. And so Oath is like 10 times as many card powers. Uh, and and they're wilder too. So there's a lot of, um, I don't know. It, 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 w- w- I think one of the fun things, I was talking about this with a friend last night, zooming out a little, like this is, how long have I worked here, Patrick? Three? I'm in my fourth year. 
I it's just the summer of 2017. Yeah, so this is you know the beginning of year four, and like putting all of the the games in a line, you can see how like collectively as a studio we are learning things from previous games and applying them to new games and and all the rest. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I'm I'm excited about the stuff that we have going. Uh, f- so in terms of I'm future games, yeah, while yes. So keep going. Okay. Well, I, I just I saw a question, and so. Um, well, actually, I, I misread that question. I don't have an answer for that specific question. But um, so in terms of future games, I can offer like a little bit of a schedule, a little bit of like a what we have cooking. Um, right now, we are working in one way or another on four different big projects. And many of those projects have been in progress for a while. And many of them will see release in 2021 or early 2022. So like, you know, all the all the timeline stuff here is fuzzy because this is a I don't know, a Tuesday afternoon design stream and we, we don't have our production manager and our marketing manager in and this we meeting. Both have babies. And we both have babies. It's hard to know when when things will go and all that stuff. But we have a bunch of new root content that we're working on right now. It's like high priority stuff that we are very excited about. Uh, and then we have a few other projects. Uh, we have a science fiction game um, that Patrick has worked on a bunch and that I'm working on now. And we have a, a, a fort expansion that we're working on. Uh, and then we have a secret project, which might make it to the end of the year. We're not sure yet. Um, but conceivably, many of those projects could receive uh, release pretty soon. Uh, but those are all kind of things that, that we are operating on. If you are interested in the fort expansion... Uh, in helping out, we will be later this week uh, tweeting out a Google form so you can sign up to be a playtester. And we're going to start soliciting playtesters for that this week. And for those of you on the Woodland Warriors Discord, you'll notice that there is a new Fort Expansion development thread that has been added, which is where we're going to have like our, our public forum where we talk about the development. Uh, it's a super cute expansion. It's very simple in terms of its, its, its overhead. Uh, but it adds like a lot of really cool uh, features to the game for not a lot of rules. Yes, I uh, played it Friday and I like it. I had a very uh, I had a weird negative experience just because I had a sinus headache. <laughs> in the <middle> of the <laughs> game. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not got not. You know, you have to always make sure that you don't <laughs> blame it on the sinus headache. headache. Yeah. Um. Yes, but I like I like the features in it. So I also won, which helped my opinion of it. So That's and true. I won by I won me. by engaging the expansion, which I think yes. And I and I tried to beat night. Patrick by not engaging the expansion, and, and I failed. I, did it. <clears throat> I know, I know. I got it was close. It was close. Um, yeah. It uh, one thing I like about it is it makes for more of what it already is. Like it's not like we're not adding a little catapult that you use to fling meeples to the board. Um, I mean. We, we could, but we, we shouldn't. It just, like, it, it looks at what Fort does, the types of interactions Fort has, and then it adds more of that stuff. Um, yeah, I, th- I don't know. I think people are really going really, really gonna to dig it. Um, yeah, I, yeah. Yes, thank you. Thank you, uh, Stream. I, I, um, been, it's been a rough, rough fall for pressure change and for, uh, it's just been a lot of mold on the ground because at least now we got. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so what you listed, uh, the four expansion, um, uh, the um, Void Lich, um, which um, we've, you've been working on. Um, basically, I worked on it this summer and came up with a set of rules <laughs> that Cole is uh, working on now. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's taking it in his own direction, and I really like the direction it's going in. So. Um, but I'm happy to continue working on world building, and uh, it's uh, I think it's I think it's gonna be a really cool game. I'm really excited about that project. Uh, and then uh, yeah, yeah. So, so let's talk about should we talk about root stuff first or yeah, void stuff? stuff first? Yeah. Let's talk about root stuff. So um, it's so interesting the, the the root conversations we've been having because basically everyone in studio has ideas hmm. about the kinds of things that we'd want to add to root. And then, of course, there's like lots of fan factions and there's, there's just lots of there's lots of material. There's a lot of enthusiasm for more stuff to put in Root. And when we first like scheduled, when we chalked Root in the calendar, we had this idea of like, well, 
uh, let's kind of like do what we did with Underworld, right? Let's kind of, we're going to run the same play. We're going to make just like some more, uh, more content expansion. Um, and I think when we started looking at it, uh, it was like, well, we actually have to make some choices about the, the nature of the expansion and the way we want to build out the content. So uh, the one thing that is uncontroversial that I'll say is that there will be more factions, uh, certainly. <laughs> we will be adding factions to the root roster. And Patrick, do you want to tell us what kind of factions we're going to be adding? Yeah, so, well, I mean... It's your mandate, so. <laughs> well, I know, but, but I, I don't mean I don't mean your specific proposal, both of which right. are super interesting. But I mean, like in general, the kinds of factions we're wanting to fill yeah. the rooster, yeah, the roster with. Yeah. So we, uh, so we are going to add. I, I, I'm currently planning on adding, and I need to see the full slate of factions that are going to be presented to me still. Um, but the the focus that I am I'm having is that we'll be working on militant factions uh, mm -hmm. for the time. Uh, and so that militant faction means your role in the game is to police the other players, and your role in the game is to um, we'll generally have twenty plus warriors, right? Like that's kind of that's. But yeah. that, it, it's funny I say that. High reach, right? High reach is yes. Is it's funny I say that though because as we discussed this morning, both of them might still do their job with less than twenty. Yeah, <laughs> so, it, like, but 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 that character, right? These are yeah, yeah, these yeah, are the yeah. kind of factions that you could pit 1v1 against the cats or against the, and yeah and yeah. that and that is the goal is that they will be they will be there for two-player matchups so yep. that these that these factions will be available to make the uh two-player matchup more interesting and i you know when you look at the when you actually boil the reach chart down a little bit um you know someone might play the cats so that other people can play some of the lower reach factions mm -hmm. and i think by having higher reach factions we can open that we can open up that calculus a little bit for other yeah. for the players. So I'm yeah I'm yeah. So that's that is my primary focus design time wise right now is to work on those and to get um, those operating. Now again, if we look at the whole studio and all the proposals that I'm receiving for factions, they may not end up end up in there. They might uh, be pushed back to another uh, expansion or um, you know of course they might shelve those. But but for now yeah I'm I'm looking at high reach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, we like, so, uh, in terms of animals, Patrick has two proposals on the table. We actually haven't like, we haven't made, so I should, I should preface everything we're about to say with no final calls have been made. We are like, mm -hmm. we are gearing up. Patrick has like turned on the root switch and we're all like working on it. But Patrick, do you want to talk about the animals that you're wanting to work in? <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm working on, um, uh, one of them will be, and I work, I'm still trying to settle on a th like I mean, theme rules wise, thematically, I know what I'm going for, but like, mm -hmm. what what like government do they represent? I don't I don't see yet. But uh, I'm working on a, a turtle faction, and they will be defensively minded, and kind of like board state. Like they'll be they'll be focused on improving the board for themselves and the other players. That's how they're going to interact with the interact with the world. Uh, and that's you know we're talking like less than a week old here. Um, yeah. This, for this proposal and i kind of impressed with myself for how quickly i pulled it together but uh so 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 we're doing that um and then they definitely won't be peaceful to to um to hit the ch to hit back on the chat they will still have to police the board mm -hmm. um and and so that's going on and then the other the other faction is um i believe we're going to do rats for a bunch of raiders and they'll be led by a charismatic warlord who will have a pawn and the pawn will be um, uh, the pawn will be kind of presented kind of like the vagabond, where it's you have a choice of which pawn you want, and then they have there's a bunch of different animal uh, choices there. And we are talking about circling back and making the pawn like so that it's the same choices as the vagabond. And so mm -hmm. then, you know, we already have pawns for the vagabond, so then you can you can you know reuse those vagabond pawns. Plus, you know, we can I don't want to say like recycle the art. We can upcycle the art. Um, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's like, hey, you have a warlord. There are these four warlord variants you have, and now suddenly you actually have ten if you're yeah, yeah, putting in yeah. all the yeah. So it's just about it's about blowing blowing out the the content. Um, yep. So one part of the expansion. So like, what, what one thing that I just want to underline something that Patrick just said, which is that this is very new. So like a lot of us, we're always kind of like stewing on root stuff. R root, I mean, comes into all of our conversations, but 
we've been so busy with other projects that it's only recently been like, hey, everybody, let's start thinking seriously about Root and getting the thing together. And I think mm-hmm. that, that that is one thing that sometimes uh, folks, uh, it's hard to realize um, about most creative industries. That, like the making of the thing, like if you work on a game for a decade, you weren't working on it for a decade. Mm-hmm. You were thinking about it for a decade and then you were working on it for six months or maybe a year for the scope of the project, right? Like, No, I think Serge Legette was working on Mare Nostrum for 10 years. But like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, know? yeah, yeah. I When I first played it, someone told me that. It was like in the design notes. I said I worked on it for 10 years and I was like, like every day he woke up and like, and that's my thought because I didn't understand game design. Back yeah, then, like every day, like I'm just gonna be chipping away at because I like I I was thinking about this with 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 Oath where where like I thought about Oath for many years before working on it, but then like, I mean it pretty much tapped me out working on that game for a year and a quarter, a year and a half. I can't imagine, <laughs> like that was working on the game, and so like a root expansion. We know how long Underworld took to build, and mm-hmm. we've improved our capacity, and we know how long this root expansion is going to take to build. And so, like, we're just starting to shift all of these ideas into more of, like, active production. Yeah, 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 um, yeah. These, these, have, these have all been, um, yeah, and when I say I've been working on them last week, yes, let me, yeah, let me, let me you're trying to clarify that. Let me, let me clarify that. These, there are parts of this I'm extracting from other factions I have designed for fun in the past and been mm-hmm. playtesting. Yeah, there's, there's definitely not, um, you know, there's some new inspiration here, and the discussion has definitely changed the direction of them. But there's things I've learned from the other factions I've worked on mm-hmm. to get to this point. Like, it's not like, yeah, it's not like we just were like, oh, turn on the switch and let's go, let's go root. Yeah, there's definitely been a lot of work here. What well, uh, one 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 comment from uh, from Lost Brit? He he comments about I hate when people turtle on dudes on a map games. And mm-hmm. one of the th- one of the directions uh, that Patrick talked about a little bit in his design notes for the turtle is really thinking about them as like almost like, I think almost like a game state accelerant. Like, you know, if the, if the turtles are building roads, everybody's using roads and they're like, um, they're infrastructure. Right. So, so they're, they're not like one of those TI races that's just going to like, you know, fortress up and then slowly expand the fortress. That's a component of their play. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I think one thing that Patrick has been really good about in his faction design and, one thing that he gave me as a general ethos when I first started working on Root was that every faction needs to have like two or three strategic axes or like paths. It's not enough to be like, hey, you're playing the Eerie, you need to do this one thing. There should really be a few different archetypes that your strategy is kind of built under. And that's certainly going to be true for these new factions as well. But I, and I, my comment was, um, you know, and again, let me preface this with like, other people in the studio are all still contributing factions, so we have mm-hmm. other things to look at before we before we finalize that, and that's why I don't want to finalize these plans. Yeah, here on stream. Um, right but now. what I do what I do like about the two factions meeting is uh, the turtles kind of present a decentralized state, and the warlord presents a very focused uh, mm-hmm. drive, like as they push across the map, and and uh, and so I'm hoping one v one for them is cool you know like we'll, we'll see how that yeah, yeah yeah absolutely <laughs> um so the things that i'm working on um yeah yeah for, for this yeah, expansion the... is so like i i'm in a weird spot when it comes to root content hey, cool is there gonna is is there something you can talk about 1v1 yeah i i can talk about something one v one. stuff that patrick hasn't even heard yet and and i don't even know if it's gonna work yet but it's how i'm thinking about it so i my my original goal for this expansion was i wanted to revise the game's setup rules and uh, that sounds like a very boring goal, goal. but uh, uh, root setup rules were not designed for a game that uh, could expand a bunch. It was designed for a game that may, maybe had one more expansion in it. So, like, it, they kind of need to be rethought a little bit. Um, this isn't, like, the kind of thing that anyone needs an update kit for, uh, <laughs> really. But just, uh, just a very simple, like, you know, right now, for example the rules like kind of define what a corner is. But if you read the rules literally, and if you're being real asinine, you can like crush people during the setup phase in certain player and faction configurations. So that just needs to, <laughs> that, that, that just needs to, to happen. Um, so what, what we're going to do, what I would like to do is 
I want to kind of fold several things together. And one of those things is the setup rules, which I want to standardize and uh, tweak a little bit here and there. Um, I don't think there will be, I saw a comment about um, some, some balance alterations. I don't think we're going to like do very much balance tinkering here. Um, but there will be some balance tinkering purely in terms of the kinds of game states that would have a lizard player in them, for instance. Mm -hmm. Um, so I want to do that. And then at the same time, I want to potentially fold in uh, an adapted version of the tournament rules, which were which have been used and worked on by the Discord. I need to talk to the Discord people about that. Um, because I want to kind of create basically a, when you play Root, here's the advanced setup rules that will let you very quickly draft a game and start playing. And that game will be kind of like to tournament spec because all those rules are going to kind of like notch and link together. Um, so I want, I want th those things to work. And then um, relating to that, so I have th this concept, which I have not talked to Patrick about yet, but I'm going to talk to him right now. And you guys are going to get a live response. This might be a bad idea and I might throw it in the garbage so, but so, so you'll know. So um, we, uh, Patrick had this thought that I thought was a very good thought, which is, you know, we have a uh, root the Riverfolk expansion, which is like where the weird factions live, right? It's you got your otters, you got your lizards, you got your double vagabond if you want to have dueling vagabonds. Riverfolk is for the weirdos. Cool. Underworld is a very like, hey, you like root with four players? You want more of what root is good at? You've got Underworld. Underworld is like the very, it's like the seafarers of Catan. It's like the very clear, obvious, good, and not that it, I, I, this is not demeaning. I think Underworld is like an, a dope expansion. Um, but it's very like mainline delivering what a good expansion should do. It is a good core expansion. And I will then, continue to try and sell both of them. Yes. No, no. They're both really good because sometimes you have a table. I mean, this is the thing that Root's really good at, right? Sometimes you have a table where sitting down, you've got like strong core players. You've got one weirdo. And then you have someone who really wishes you were playing an RPG instead and you can hand them the Vagabond board. Um, yeah, Root will be kept weird, believe me. Um, so my uh, or Patrick's proposal was like, hey, what if we think about this new expansion as being tooled towards the two-player mode? And what does that even look like to tool an expansion towards the two-player mode? I've been thinking about lots of different uh, uh, proposals around this. And here's my, my, my current operating proposal. And so this is, again, this could be a bad idea. I might throw this away. But this is what I'm going to be working on for the next few weeks. So um, that we include in the expansion two factions and then three what, I'm, what I'll call like minor factions. Uh, the minor factions will be housed in like a tuck box, or could be housed. Again, this is all this is all draft. I'm spitballing. I'm imagining that they like live in a tuck box, and they include like some meeples and a couple cards for rules and things like that. And these minor factions, when you're playing a four, five, or six player game, you use one minor faction. When you're playing a three-player game, you use two minor factions. When you're playing a two-player game, you use three minor factions. Potentially, they would have reach values associated with them, and there'd be like an alternate reach table that you'd use for, for these minor factions. And I also would want those factions be to be color-coded. So, for example, you could have like the marauding, invading cat army, which has you know a very simple little rule how it operates on its turn, and it has orange pieces, but they're in a different shape from the marquee. So if you want to play with, with the marquee-style minor faction, you don't need to dig through your root core set and find that many cat meeples. You just have, like, you know, cats with one ear, and they're, they're a little, like, scrappy-looking in their screen print. There's six of them or something. And, and then... Just to confuse the people of eye patch cats. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Well, they'll have a different cutout, is what, what I was thinking. But yeah. the reason... And then... Uh, what I would want to add is the minor fact, if you play with minor factions, there are ways that you earn influence points. And then in between the rounds of the game, you can spend those influence points to alter turn order and to take control of the minor factions. And so it adds like a little bit of a currency to the game. And my, my thinking here is there are kind of two strategies for how to approach Root as a two player game. One strategy would be let's make the map smaller and more direct and l l l let's make the world of root smaller so that it so that some of the the pressure is the same 
uh, when you're playing two as if you're playing with a lot of players. Uh, but this other approach says, what if we make it as big? And this also allows the world to be like very full of like odd characters. So like Nick in the office has been talking about a traveling circus faction. And what, what I told him today was like, that's exactly the kind of thing I want like a minor faction to be. So like the otter minor faction is like traveling circus otters who can trade cards and they behave in this certain way. And like they can't play in the same game as the otters. They're the same color. So it would like lock out. And then when it comes to setting up like a competitive root game, when you're figuring out like the reach value, so the way, you know, the, the, um, the, the root drafting is you, you have to get a viable draft where you choose like players plus one number of faction pieces, use victory point chits. And then that if it has a viable reach, you draft from that pool. What I'm thinking here is like, first you'd be like, okay, we're playing four players. So there's one neutral faction. We're going to kick them in. And then that thing has a reach value, which will then inform the kind of factions you can see. So that means in games where the neutral factions have higher reach values, the lizards start to become viable in more three-player combinations. And you can kind of make up that difference where there are certain factions that you just don't see in low player count games just because their reach value is kind of too low. Um, and, you know, this is a very loose design, but it... My, my hope is that it uh, I would want whatever the system to engage with the minor factions to be like a sphere of play that potentially could also be influencing like tempo and turn order and things like that. And then it would lend itself maybe if, if, if it's good to, to people who are really interested in like competitive root and it would add to the competitive root uh, game in ways that like would ultimately make uh, would increase the number of like viable and interesting faction combinations and things like that. Um, yeah, that's so like, you know, what, um, what, 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 what some folks have talked about in chat, the, the minor factions is kind of NPCs sort of, and, and, and they're different from the bots in a really critical way because the bots are players. Bots can win a game. The minor factions are like one, they have almost no rules associated with them and they're just pawns. They're not pawns in the root sense, but they're just pieces that you move around. So like a marauding cat army could be like it could follow the rules of like hey if you r rule your clearing move to an adjacent clearing in battle or if you don't rule it just battle and the player who controls that marauding cat army gets to steer them around um and that, that's the general concept but then uh, a, a couple little things about it you know you could imagine a faction box that has two main factions three minors and then we can, we can do a bunch of other minor factions, and this allows, like, Kyle to flesh out some of the world building. Or not flesh out some of the world building, ro like, engage in some of the cool world building that he's been doing with the RPG art. Because all mm -hmm. of those, like, colorful characters that populate the RPG, which you only see in Root, like, on the card art, can now have, like, a couple different meeples. And if we code them to the same colors as the existing factions... We don't have to have a bunch of like mauve colored factions because we're running out of places on the, the light spectrum. Um, anyway, that's just a general concept. I don't know. Maybe it'll work. Um, thanks, Ryan. <laughs> you, uh, yeah. So it's here's here's uh, people have already made my jokes, but um, I'm not going to accept it until it works for the lizards. It's one of the core players. Sorry, Cole. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> got your work cut out for you. And then, um, uh, da, 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 what was I going to say? I've, uh, I've already forgotten. Oh, yeah. So let me pitch you my victory system for mine. Okay, sure. Fire away. And then, um, but we'll do it. We'll do it later. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. yeah um, I, you know, one, I'll say so, someone compared it to like the custom scenarios. And I, uh, there's something funny with the custom scenarios. I thought I was going to really like be excited about designing custom scenarios for Root. I have had a really hard time like getting my brain in the right place. And it's because Root is so ecosystem, ecosystem driven. What mm -hmm. I want, like, like, like this to me is as close to a custom scenario as I really want to personally design. Other people can design custom scenarios. I don't care. But I want to like put in some actors, like put in, I want props. And these factions are like some of those props, right? And then- Are we still going to get the RLF? Sure. Yeah, no, know. absolutely. I mean, but like that is precisely like, I think the factions in Root always have to have like a slight bit of ambiguity about them because- they're going to be in a bunch of different contexts. Like the Woodland Alliance is my example there. Like, are they Marxists? Like, I don't know. 
they, they, they have ideological ambiguity. You like don't know exactly what their deal is. Um, and with these minor factions, we actually can make them a little bit more pointed in their storytelling. And we can also make their effects more dramatic as long as there is enough um, li- liquidity around their control. Because, you know, a player can have a minor faction and maybe it's really, really strong, but it will hurt their ability to control player order and other minor factions and things like that. I like the raccoons in front of Judea better. <laughs> um, yeah, and so actually this uh, this Super Smash uh question or comment makes from ryan makes me think that how we'll actually select the factions is we're just gonna have a battle royale game among the new factions and then the, right. t- the two highest scorers will be the ones we go with the map will start getting smaller as you play the uh, game. Yeah. <laughs> yes that's, that's that's right um no 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 uh, we probably won't be doing that uh, uh, and, so, and so conversely my, my um the part of the project i'm pitching back to the team then is after after i'm done working on these milton factions and someone asked about a new map we won't have a new deck right because yeah, that's no new deck that's we love the new deck the new deck does great things for the game and i like playing with it i and i it's funny because i've played a lot of new deck and now lately i've been going back to old like for play testing i've been going back to the old deck and I'm like, oh yeah, I kind of miss the old deck too. Yeah. Um, yes. So the the other, conversely, the other the the other half of the pitch for me then is like the the expansion will be about putting these Milton factions into play, and to create a world where um, two works. We're pushing both edges. So I'd like to see um, a way to get five or six player to work a little bit better. Mm-hmm. Um, it's it's a fine game with five right now. Um, I, it's funny because Cole and I differ a little in opinion about this. I, I, I keep saying this. I hope Cole doesn't mind. No, no, no. I don't mind at all. Yeah. So Cole likes the three-player game quite a bit. And I, I, I get why. There's a there's a very great sense of like, um, it almost gets chess-like. If I push here, you know, you're going to have to pull there. You know, and, and, and that works really well for me. Whereas I, from role-playing, like the five or six-player game because I like the strangeness of the interactions between the players to me the asymmetry is about the 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 weird negative spaces between the players and that gets exacerbated with five or six player and Mm -hmm. so i i i'm drawn more to five or six player but i've been in some bad six player games because it's just it can turn into a bit of a slog and so there's Mm -hmm. that's my that's my concern is well in you know you're gonna have to like downtime if you want to play five or six player route that's and to me I don't mind downtime as much as most folks, but yes, there will be a focus on a map that'll work better for five or six player. And then, um, but it won't just be for five or six player. You can eliminate clearings from it and turn it back into a four player map. So mm-hmm. it'll be a new map on one side of the one side of the board that comes with the game. Yeah. And then the other side of the board, I assume then will be for the two player mode, right? Is that how I think the two player mode might work. So the hope is that it maybe works on all maps and all types. And it's just like you just fill it out. We're not sure. And then I can just pitch all my maps. And, and then, you, well, then, yeah, then you can use all your maps, right? I mean, it, yeah. like, I really, I like the idea of, to me, like, so the five and six player game, well, the five player game I've played certainly more than the six player, is one of the things that's really cool about it is that the world is so busy and bustling. Hmm. And so the hope with the two player is that we find a way to get more of the bustle in the two player. And so then, you know, we, we don't need to contract the map in, in, in that case. Um, someone asked about whether or not we'll be doing a Kickstarter. The answer is we will. Um, it will be, you know, one of the things that I that I, I was telling the team here is that it's important to me that like for a proven product like Root, that our Kickstarters are parties. There are parties that we're like throwing for you guys and for us and for everyone. And so there'll just be like lots of root stuff to do and see. And um, it's like a, it's a joyous thing. Like the underworld Kickstarter was so much fun. It was the funnest Kickstarter I've ever worked on. And it just had a, it it had a real, real light character to it. And we we want that for, for this next, for this next Kickstarter too. Um, My daughter is getting excited about Roblox next next to me. (laughs) Just so everybody knows. Yeah. Um, so the uh, I just want to address two things here. And mm-hmm. someone mentioned um, map expansion. Um, I think we're always. I have a, a stable of maps I've been playtesting with in TTS. Um, 
and I think that's always I think it's good to have that be the centerpiece of expansion. Um, it kind of sets the theme a little bit, sets mm-hmm. the tone a little bit, and uh, it's a big art ask. One thing that I could see happening is I have a very 3D map. If you follow me closely, you've seen pictures of it. Um, that might be a place to just do a single, like a one-off map uh, as a as an expansion unto itself. Um, there's also a way we can present that map on a board that probably actually makes more sense than the 3D version of it. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's working on that, and then uh, somebody said, um, "Sorry, uh, Roblox faction. Indeed, there's going to be a Roblox faction." Um, joking. Uh, <laughs> uh, for the, for the localization uh, question, we do localizations after the first print run. Um, huh. so like the, for many people in other language zones, like I, I think underworld is now underway, but it, folks have to kind of be a, an expansion behind. And we do that to protect both our partners and the integrity of our process. It's very hard to work on an expansion when you're also having to worry about the localizations at the same time. And so we usually just kind of break out those, those steps into two steps. Uh, Yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, there's the yeah, someone's talking about the tunnel map, which is what I've been working on. Um, Ooh, a qu- big, oh, go ahead. Yeah, there won't be a big box this time out, I'm afraid. Um, it is just too impractical for us to make one. I, I, I really want to temper this that conversation a lot with um, Jamie Stegmeyer, who sold maybe three times as many slices as we sold roots, maybe twice as many, did a big box, and I. You know, and we can criticize the approach he took to it. Um, but he said he just broke even on the project. And, you know, we're talking about a person who knows logistics and production and marketing extremely well. And if he broke even on that project, I'm concerned about our odds with that project. We'll figure it out. I but also it, like it this, this Kickstarter. I, I don't know. I am so I'm so mixed on big boxes because I I've started thinking about them as like game coffins. Mm-hmm. Because like as soon as you put it in like a collect and, and the thing game I think tombs. yeah game tombs because yeah. th- there, there's this funny thing that happens where it just makes it harder to play the game like uh, I have uh, I love Command and Colors uh, Napoleonics my wife and I have played I think every s- released scenario for all the nation expansions of Command and Colors uh, but for I, I put them in a super box like a big tackle box and we didn't play them. Once, once I entombed them in this box because it was just too hard. And uh, even though they were very well organized. And so actually I unpacked them and put them all back in their respective expansions so that it was very easy for us to be like, hey, we're going to play with the Russians. And we grab like the base box and the Russians and then we go. And uh, we've been thinking about this a lot. Uh, this has been on my mind lately because we just got Oath. And uh, spoiler alert for Oath, uh, no expansion we do for Oath will fit in the Oath box. The oath box is completely, perfectly full with sleeves. So don't worry, sleeve folks, I got you. It's completely full. And like I was thinking about what it would be like to have like an oath big box if we were to ever expand. I mean, that's who knows if that such a thing would ever happen. But I I just don't think it would be like a desirable product because it would just be harder to set up. Like we we have got the ideal setup for oath like down and it's in Mm -hmm. the box itself. And so with, with root, like I kind of like the, like the, uh, like I have my root in two boxes sort of where right. I have, yeah, I have like, you know, I have the base and then I have everything else in underworld. And then I use the river folk box for like play testing stuff and kind of random things I'm working on. Um, and I really like that organization. Like it, I can move it around easily. I can swap content easily. So it's not to say that we won't do it. I just, I don't know. I, I want to help make things that make people play the games more, not play less. And currently a big box like falls into the like vanity capstone. It's not that it's necessarily like a wrong or right thing, but whenever I see a picture of someone like sharing a, one of those game boxes that's built to fit like an exact Calyx square, I'm always like, I don't know. I don't know if I want that. Not to, I don't know. I, I won't name names, but there there are some big boxes out there that turn me off. So I, I'm careful. Yeah, I like it. I like my Sentinels box, but it also means I can't move the game to another uh, anywhere now. Mm-hmm. 
Um. Yeah, I yeah I agree. I yeah yeah there is there is definitely a critique for the scythe box, um, but I'm not gonna critique another. Yeah, yeah, yeah. no, no, yeah, not here. Not here. Those yeah, are the, those be... are the after dark Twitter hot takes that we're <laughs> yeah, known give me, for here. Give me at a convention. Uh, yeah, <laughs> then, we'll, then we'll spill all the beans. <laughs> then I'll then I'll talk. Uh, oh, there are some questions earlier. I'd like to circle back to sure. since we're already at two fifty. Um, and maybe I mean if you want to go for another half an hour, it's fine. If I we... can go. I can go a little bit longer, but yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, we're we're all cool here at uh, my house today. Is my lighting still good? It's good. Yeah, no, it looks good. I'm all okay. washed out, but um, it's I'm in the I'm in the um, I guess the east side of my house, so it's pretty pretty dark. Um, so Naked Meeple right off the bat said, "So you guys have expanded leader roster lately with a design by another designer, Grant. Any plans to expand further?" Uh, yeah. Keep watching this space. I guess mm -hmm. is all I can say right now. But yeah, yeah, we we've been looking a little bit further out out of our own stable. Um, yeah, I don't think we have any objections to it. The, the main thing is really, and I, I think that folks sometimes get the sense that like there are a million games that are out there wanting to be published, and like there aren't. And really, the sorts of games that we're looking for, like the kind of interactive games that are close to like our aesthetic philosophy. Um, if I go to a proto spiel, I expect to see zero to one of those types of games. And if I do see one, it's not going to be ready for publication usually. So if you have a, like a super interactive game that is very story first and would lend itself to the kinds of worlds that we build, like you can send me an email. I'll look at it. Yeah. And um, yeah, actually, I am. Quackalope brought a game to me. I'd like to look at Thursday afternoon. Mm. Speaking of it, we'll say that on stream. Um question for cole are you still looking to make a game on reconstruction uh We've yes about this yeah it's it, it, it i'm I, i'm working on it i'm still reading i mean so it's so funny i usually when i work especially on one of the history we're games, talking about the american reconstruction right talking about american reconstruction okay um you know 64 78 to 78 mm -hmm. i um i've been reading I, a lot about it yeah it's well and and uh, i just actually it's funny last week i was reading um Henry Louis Gates Jr.'s uh, Stony Road, which is awesome. Great book. Mm -hmm. um, I usually don't talk about the research phase of my history games. I just happen to like have mentioned that I'm working on this project. The research phase is so long. It's so long, and it's going to be years <laughs> before I'm ready to like really get into the game. I have, a, I have a working kind of core engine, and I have a big list of things I wanted to do. But it's just, it's just going to take a long time. That's all I have to say about it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I still mean, think it's, it's urgent and interesting and important, but it's probably a great topic for early gig. Yeah, yeah, yeah it yeah. might be. I, I will. I think if I wanted to do a game on that subject, I wouldn't want to dress it up in animals or yeah, It's tough. I mean, yeah, we can. I won't talk about my politics right now. Um, <laughs> So we uh, someone asked about the space game with that weird alt win conditions. We, we talked about Void Lich a little bit. Mm -hmm. That is coming along. Um, we have a great. Uh, it is getting built with a great campaign system. Uh, it's got a cool. Um, it won't be an oath campaign where it's like free to keep playing forever. It'll be definitely like kind of a three act yeah. um, uh, thing, and then you reset it and go back to the back. Is that kind of the approach we're taking? Yeah. So like the Maybe way I, the way I think yeah. about. Void Lich is that it um, it's kind of like it's similar to Oath in that we are thinking about the future of thematic gaming and thematic storytelling in, in mm -hmm. tabletop games and realizing that campaign style games we think are going to be a big part of that. Mm -hmm. uh, like Oath, it is fully emergent. Um, like Oath, uh, you don't rip up any cards. But whereas Oath is very gradualistic, you know, Institutions erode, things get built and then tumble down and then get built again, and there's no end really. Mm -hmm. um, Void Lich is designed to be a lot more jagged, so it, it, it was it was fun to, to turn my attention to this project after working on Oath a bunch because when you work on a project for a long time, you develop things that you hate about it, but you, that you can't change. And it's not that something is bad, like I I straight love Oath, but there are things that Oath can't do. And one of the things that Oath can't do is like jagged, uh, manicured campaign storytelling, right? So uh, I remember when I was talking to Patrick about it, I uh, I was like, you know, for for Voyage, we can do that. Like we can kind of tell a sci-fi trilogy, 
So like this is this big epic space game. It's told in three acts. Each act takes about an hour. Um, it is in rules complexity less than root. It's simple. In fact, I um, the 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 pitch that I've been working with is. When you open the box of Void Lich, you have a, a, a two-page rulebook for, I guess, four pages, but a, a two-page spread, no staple, a single folded sheet of paper, um, that explains all the concepts of the game and allows you to get playing right away. And then you have another sheet of paper that, allow, that shows you how to set up your first game. And then you don't actually even need a walkthrough. The kind of walkthrough that Root has or the really intense walkthrough that Oath has, you just don't need in Void Lich. Like, here are the concepts, go for it. And then uh, what I mean by jagged um, hep- hepto is you like in in Void Lich, if you win the game and construct the death ray in the next game, there is a death ray and you can use it to use kind of a Flash Gordon type example. And so if I, I think about the narrative of Void Lich as having like 10 switches, which can be in the neutral on or off position. And so depending on which switches get flipped, the games are going to be really, really, really dramatic. And in, in terms of the asymmetry, the version I'm working on now, which, which, which can have asymmetry, but the kind of like basic starting way of playing is the first scenario, the New Hope scenario, is there's almost no asymmetry. But by the end of the third game, there is more asymmetry than root. Um, yeah, Space Oath, but faster. Um, it, 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 uh, the engine of the game I can, I can say a little bit about is totally unlike anything I've ever worked on. Um, it, it is, a, a it's card powered in a, in a way that, uh, I think is really exciting and interesting. Um, a lot of the games I work on, uh, have, they're fundamentally like very scarce when it comes to their action economy. Uh, that is, you know, if you're, if you're playing Oath, you'll often be like, oh, if I had one supply point. Or Pamir, you're like, I have one point from getting this dominance check. Or Root, certainly, you're like a turn from winning. You're always like a little action, a little action uh, short. And Void Lich, right now, does the opposite, where you actually have a lot of actions, but you're bidding them to do things. So you might like cannibalize a turn where you could have done a lot to do one really important thing at the proper time. And I can't really explain more about it without just telling you how it works, which I, I don't want to do right now because I want to wait till we get a little later. But it is very fast playing and dramatic. And it also, uh, it, it has some very clear um, root DNA. So folks who like like the way movement works and kind of the way combat works in root are going to find a lot of commonalities. And it's our hope that like this is a game that people who don't play root but are interested in our stuff can find this game as a kind of first title. And if you already know how to play Root, then you know like a third of the rules of Void Lich already, like in terms of some of the basic mechanisms of play. Uh, and it is so fun to be working on a space game. I'm really uh, grateful that Patrick is letting me uh, work on this project with him because it's going to be pretty different from any other space game out there. And it's my hope that like it's going to tell some pretty wild and interesting big stories, uh, the kinds of things that you might associate with like a TI or something like that. It's it's interesting for me. So I, so I started. The We're being rated by BGG. Sorry. Yeah, it's kind of exciting. I have never been rated before, so here <laughs> we go. Um, I I started the design of this in a meeting I was bored in in like 2006, um, and and started the bones of it. And it was it was actually in a diesel punk fantasy setting back then, but now it's I've. I've listened to more heavy metal between now and then, and so now we're <laughs> in the heavy metal space world. Um, and so I'm excited just to be able to continue to do world building and um, and not have to worry about the mechanics as much. It's funny though, your card play is made by feeble, you know, mid forties baby brain. A little, uh, <laughs> we'll see where I end up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but just the, you know, it's it's a little bit to wrap your head around the, the basic the basic flow of the turn uh, mm-hmm. when you're playing the cards and figure out do you want a low number or high number, um, and 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 the four you know the four tasks and like you can isolate yourself from one of the tasks very easily and then get back to it too you know you can get back to it too quickly or mm-hmm. too well I should say and um, and so that's that's it's been a lot of fun to see um, I'm very excited to. Uh, I'm very excited to uh, jump back into testing for it. When we, um, somebody asked about like complexity compared to root. So uh, 
Oath, in terms of the number of rules that you need to know to play Oath, I usually describe Oath as like two root factions, which is true, but it lies about an important part, which like in Oath, there is no guidance. In Root, you have like a little trail of breadcrumbs to follow. Like, where are my victory points? Oh, just go do those things. We'll get your victory points. And in Oath, you have no breadcrumbs. So even though the actual like rules overhead is not that intense in Oath, the world is so open and terrifying. There are no guardrails. Like you can, in the very first turn of Oath, take your car and drive it into a ditch and not really realize that you've driven your car into a ditch. And that's one of my favorite parts of the design. But it means that like it, it punches above its weight. And uh, Void Lich is not like that. Uh, Void, Witch, uh, Void Lich is a little open, but it, the rules overhead is like half that of Root. Mm-hmm. So it's like half of a Root faction. Uh, it, to play Void Lich, the, in terms of the core mechanisms of the game, is about the complexity level of like the cats. Um, mm-hmm. Where it gets trickier is the action structure is a little bit different. So it, it does take some like learning and, um, you know, so it, it does have some of that openness, but instead of starting from like a two faction point, it just starts from a lower point and then ramps up. So a lot of the complexity in Void Lich is emergent and is like about outplaying the opponent. There's a, there's a lot of mind reading that happens in Void Lich. I want to, I, I want for back of the box for Oath, I want just driving cars into a ditch over and over. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. That's how I feel when I play any game of Cole. <laughs> Um, uh, yeah, so uh, theme-wise, Void Lich is going to be um, th- at the center of it. The premise is that there was this fellow, uh, an undead necromancer, who ruled the known galaxy. So it's going to be a kind of a space fantasy. Mm-hmm. And uh, he has expired in a lab accident he caused, um, which destabilized the center of the galaxy because he destroyed the center of the galaxy. And so the players are, um, you know, it's like it's like the various services of that of of that empire are now fighting for control that's left of the galaxy and and are kind of rediscovering the galaxy. So there's a little bit of um, there's a little bit of like you know I think it's pretty common in sci-fi where this you know you're finding the old empire or you're finding mm-hmm. the remains of an old federation as you explore that. And it, it, it's kind of a, it's a fun product to work out on from a narrative standpoint because it like the Void Lich plot thread we can kind of like build out like the first second and third act of that thread. And then we can build all these other threads and the way the engine for the game works is, you know, that the, that, that void Lich quest line can be engaged in the second act. And Mm -hmm. then it it can, you know, it can be a big part of the conclusion of the the final act, or it could have been engaged right from the start and the whole game can float fold into that under that arc. Or that there could be two or three or even four of these arcs kind of happening at once. Um, so it's very, like, it's a really fun space to work in because it's, like, it's a super modular core system. Um, yeah, and maybe the Void Lich doesn't come up, right? Right, yeah, and, and that yeah. It, it's, it's something else, or, or it comes maybe up. Maybe he but, truly is gone. Yeah, yeah. and it, it is the sort of game, that, like, when you finish one, you're like, well, I'm, like, ready to go for the second round. Like, let, let's yeah. actually just, like, start the second movie right now. Yeah. Um, is Kyle fair and art in the Void Lich as well? Yes. Yes, yes. 100%. Someone just cocked yes. their head off camera. Sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> uh, and of course, they laugh at my children suffering. <clears throat> um, let's see if there are any things that I missed. How oh, okay is it? We don't know. I have more written down. Sorry. Oh, it, no, well, you're good. Someone asked about Vast. Yeah, a- answer uh, the Vast question. Go, go. Yeah, that's good. Uh, so yeah, and yes, Kyle will be working on. Uh, Kyle's like our studio artist, so he's he's going to be working. He on. has to. He has to. Yeah, uh, we have him change to his desk. No, none of that. Um, um, but he enjoys us paying him, so he can continue working on art. Um, yeah. So vast, uh, vast three is shelved for now. I think there's been some talk in twenty twenty two of doing kind of return to vast we'll do like a five-year anniversary thing uh we're going to try and make a better storage solution for it so that as the as it grows it's funny like flying in the face of what cole said previously yeah about about big boxes but i think actually like i I do agree with cole and i i think i even proposed an inkling this a year ago is that you need to have a way to store the game so that the so that the components can move in and out better or, or faster and um so, so we need to do a couple things with new product. We need to get Vast TCC to a level that it's easier to learn and play, more in line with TMM. 
and then we want to add the, the frozen fear content and bring that all into one house together um i'm kind of like no one in the studio is ready to carry that right now from like a work standpoint we're all kind of we've mm -hmm. and we've been presented with a lot of like even projects from outside of the studio to work on and all of us are like no we want to focus our own creative efforts right now um and i think that's what an uh, extension of a void lich and me working on void lich was and the other two projects i have you know path and castle blood like longer term those are me like expressing very much how i how i have this these stories i want to tell and get to and so right now we just don't have a developer for vast that's yeah. that just just plumb all there is to it um and so we haven't we haven't gotten to we haven't gotten to it yet but someday we'll yeah someday we would like to circle back the other concern we have is it's tmm sales have just been um, not what we expected. So, so we're, we're working through that. Yeah. Thing. And I think like one, when it comes to the vast storage solution, mm -hmm. really it has to do with like, if, you know, when we get to, when we get down the line and we want to do like second edition vast, are there things that we can do to the core design of the game to make it more modular? And then if it is made more modular, what does the product line look like and the project profile and all like all of those things, which then also have to do with storage. We kind of need to like take all of those questions at the same time. Mm -hmm. So like the one thing I, that I feel like we know for sure about fast three is that it won't look like TMM or TCC or frozen or um, uh, fearsome foes, the other TFF, mm -hmm. like whatever vast three looks like is going to be in a completely new project profile. Uh, and we don't know what that looks like yet. And I think when we, you know, it's a project that I'm really interested in, but in a, in a far and more far away way. Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, to answer the question there, Void Lich will be resettable, completely resettable. Yep. There's no damage components. I don't, I'm not, um, the Marxist in me doesn't like damaging components. Um, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yep. All right. Cole, do you want to talk about anything else? I'm uh, working on Path and Castle Blood for down the road. Castle Blood, Blood is my big dungeon crawler that we're probably going to call Blut, uh, which is the, the Blut, I don't know, whatever the German is for uh, the four-letter uh, German is. And then uh, and then Path, of course, is the open-world adventure game in, yeah. um, inside of... Uh, um, inside of the root universe yeah so someone asked if i would be interested in doing oath as more of an adventure game and i think that like that's path territory and i'm really excited to see what happens with patrick's path design um <laughs> one uh someone commented about how much we, we focus on storage uh i my, my little anecdote from that is that uh i feel like the uh one thing i've learned about storage and board games is that the tendency is to just make boxes bigger because it makes insert design easier and allows people to do fancier stuff. And so if, okay. if you want to pack a box full of content, it's incredibly hard to think about storage. And so one of the things that happened, I'll, I'll, sh I'll share this with everyone, with the Oath insert design, is that we, we worked really hard on the design of the Oath insert and we sent it to the factory. And our factory manager was like, well, you guys, I thought it was going to be real fancy, but this is like a pretty like Spartan basic insert. Don't you want all these features? And we're like, you know, if you can add those features, great. But like this insert will work and you should just go this path. And then they came back to us a few weeks later and they were like, uh, it won't fit. We have to make the box bigger and we, we need to do something. We're like, nope, go back to the original design. We already solved all this stuff. And so like, and, and I'm especially, I'm very proud of how this insert uh, turned out. I, I owe many thanks to, to Patty and Nick and all the folks who like really just crunched the numbers and, and worked on. And, and Patty got the down there. Oh yeah. Like well, crazy. And, and, and it, yes. Yeah. She built a like plus or minus two millimeter model of the insert that, that we use to like make sure everything fits and, and works right. And, it, and it's, it's similar to like the, the, the Pax Premier insert, which is like, if you want to fill a box with stuff and then also have a plastic insert suspend it, um, you just have to do a lot of like careful minimalist and like kind of true engineering work where at the end you hardly notice that there was a ton of work done in it. And our, our general philosophy about insert design is it needs to lend itself to play. Uh, and it, it, you know, it's not about arranging the pieces in a pretty way. It has to, yes, you know, the insert is not the thing people are, they're going to turn their eyes at. We want the insert to help players, put away the game and set it up. 
and that takes a lot of focus and effort. And, and it, it's been interesting, you know, we've had, uh, we, we have two graphic designers on staff, and I think it's no surprise that after this experience, both of them have picked up a lot of 3D skills and are working on improving them. People ask me what I should study to go into game design, and I'm always like, yeah, just study graphic design. Yeah, no, I, I mean, it was, I, I, when I think about the meetings I've had today and what I've talked about, it's been all graphic design stuff and print file stuff. Like, that is half of my week is just talking about, like, in the files. So people are asking about PATH. I'll just say, so what PATH is for me is really, like, therapy for the COVID time because it's uh, – both both uh, Castle of Blood and, and Path work well solo, so I just, you know, when I'm up late at night, I just bang on the game of Path or Castle Blood and get back to work. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. I think that's pretty much it. Are there any random last questions? Uh, Direwolf, I cannot comment on what they're uh, working on. Uh, they did, they said, they confirmed in an answer today that they are working on, currently working on Riverfolk and Underworld. Yep. Yeah, so they're, they're working on it, but... Yep. Uh, uh, and it, people, a lot of people ask about balance changes. Um, I haven't... Floor, I've played some of the balance changes. Uh, I have not explored that topic with Cole. I yeah, so, some of them that. Some of them are smart. I'll just say that at the start. Some mm -hmm. of them are smart. Uh, some of them are less smart. Uh, it's, it, it's a difficult thing to do. We, mm -hmm. we, we can't just push out a patch note and, and adjust some things. And I am generally quite satisfied with the state of the game's balance currently, mm -hmm. but uh, we are not going to be doing kind of any incremental balance adjustments. But, I mean, by all means, if your group wants to. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, yeah, I'm not, I'm not yeah. going to come and, and please you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I think that, like, one of the things that I'm so... I don't exactly have a term for it. I'm sure there is one. But one of the things that is informing the work I'm doing on, like, the low player count games is looking for ways so that the game can be, like, made a little bit more elastic and it will mm -hmm. kind of, like, help some, you know, balance problems, those that might exist and those that are just perceived either way. Um, because one of the things that happens, like, so as you make, I mean, I'll just, this is... Quick, quick TED talk. As you make a system more interactive, it becomes more self-correcting, right? That that's an obvious truth. So if the if the if the two-player if the minor faction mode increases the amount of interaction in the game system, it will also address any balance problems that might be happening in your in your per, in your group's meta or the the meta at large. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> Jerem Curry. He he knows what's up. You, you just gotta smack the vagabond around first turn. Just n knock him down a couple times. <laughs> uh, I remember the first game I was playing with uh, Nick, where he was just like second turn. He's like, I'm gonna attack the vagabond, and I was like, that old me. And then yeah, and that that set the pace to the rest of my game. <laughs> um, so I, you just gotta do it. Cool. Uh, I think. Um, I think, I think that good. covers it. I vote that covers it for me. Uh, so, just to recap, uh, probable root expansion Kickstarter uh, coming soon. Yeah, uh, Q1, let's say. Probably Void Lich Q2 or Q3 Kickstarter, mm -hmm. um, and then there's a Ford expansion in the works. And um, I think we said Nick is working on a secret project, right? Yes, he, he is working expect. on a secret project. That is and both like things that we've done and very unlike things that we've done. Very unlike things we've done, yeah. I'm excited to see um, as the art for it starts to get produced. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Clockwork will be out for the video game tomorrow. Um, yep. And We will and... be doing, for the Ford expand, or the Ford, uh, for the Root expansion, we will have new Clockwork bots for the new uh, factions, for the expansion yeah, thank factions. You. Thank you, yep, yep. And that's, yeah, and that will be by that designer yeah and so that's mm -hmm. what we're working on for this year yep i think that's it well thank you all for coming um we will be doing kind of regular design streams uh over you know over the next several months like we normally do and then last thing i'll mention is the woodland warriors uh chat for discord for people who are there there is now a fort expansion channel 
uh, where we'll be having our playtest discussion. Um, we will be soliciting playtesters uh, for Fort. And, you know, our, our playtesting and our design process are both very open. So, you know, if it's the kind of thing that you want to get involved with, you can send me an email at cole at leadergames.com. I will put you on the various lists. And, Doing it right now. Uh, uh, yeah, ooh, I'm going to get tons of emails after this. Good work, me. Um, but uh, we will solicit. I mean, like the same thing I did with Oath, where basically as I, you know, as I got into Oath, I would say in stream, like, hey, if you want to play test, just let me know. Um, the root stuff will start going into really active play testing in probably about a month where we'll start bringing in people from the community. The void lich stuff won't probably happen for about three or four months, but know that it's kind of coming down the pipe. Yeah. And I, to replace my usual Wednesday play testing, which I would do, we're not, we went back to work from home recently, um, or we're encouraged to. Uh, so I'll probably be supplementing that from Woodland Warriors um, to do a, to just, to do the more intimate. Not intimate, but like the more like structured. Like I just need these four people at this table on a certain night to play. Um, you know, of course I have the studio too, but I don't want to overlog. If we're also working on Void Lich, and I have a lot of ideas, we you know we got to kind of pace yep. that resource a little bit too. So, and, so working that. Oh, yeah, I was gonna say last thing was reminded by chat and uh, Marshall. There just yes. posted a link to it. The yep. Oath Backer Kit is closing on the thirtieth, and if you want to take advantage of us and get an impossibly good deal, our wor our worst deal for us yet, uh, yeah. please buy it now or wait and give us more money for it later. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> wait for a review. So yeah, it, it will go up in price though. Yeah. Soon. All right. Thanks everybody. All right. Have Thank a, you all. A lovely day. Stay safe. Yes. Wear a mask, etc. Be be oh. like us and have only video calls with your coworkers. If Further, possible. get over here. Ah. Oh, ah. Say hi to Alice. <laughs> All, right. All right. Take care, everyone. Take care. Bye bye. <clears throat>